Before we dive in, I want to take a quick look at what's going on right now and what's coming up next. We're working on wrapping up the Building a Blog series that you're watching right now, and we're also rolling out some new episodes about scraping the web with Ruby. Up next, we're going to take a deep dive into working with APIs, and we're also going to start publishing some content to help you start making some money freelancing. If you're interested in that, you need to head over to techmaker.tv and sign up because that will not be available on YouTube. Let's get started with the episode. In this episode, we're going to fix a bug that I created from the last episode or maybe the one before, and I'm going to show you how to set up pagination. So if I click on one of these unpublished um, posts, we'll run into a problem really quick. So we get this undefined method strf time for nil class, and what that's telling us is that our published at is nil. So a couple of conversations went on about how to fix this, and um, if you browse around the comments, you'll probably see some. Um, but I wanted to come at this a slightly different way. By the way, I switched to uh, Adam for my editor, and I'm really digging it. So if we look at post.rb, we have this display publish day. And I made the error of assuming that um, since a blog post only shows up for a normal reader when it's published, um, this will always be here. However, if you're looking at it and you haven't published it yet and you're the author, you're going to get an error. So what we can do as a quick fix, we can just say if published at, and I think you can just leave it like this, but I like to be really explicit and say present, uh, which is a Rails method that will check and see if your attribute has uh, anything entered into it and we can do this and this will fix the problem but I'm gonna add a little more to it so let's go back and refresh and see what we get so it doesn't show up anywhere which is probably alright um, but I want to say else not published yet and we'll see where this shows up so right there um, and I could work on the copy, but it's not a big deal. Anyway, you get the point. But that fixes our problem. The next thing we're going to do is set up pagination. So we need to jump over to the web, and I'll follow some instructions from a gem called Will Paginate. This is one of the most used libraries for um, pagination. So for the moment, just copy this and put this in your gem file. Uh, just put it down here toward the bottom. Let's go stop our server and then we'll bundle install. You can just type bundle. And you can see up here that it installed will paginate 3.1.5. Let's start back our server and I'm gonna add a few more blog posts off camera. So I created a few new posts, not a lot, obviously, and I'm just gonna publish um, most of them. And now let's check out what this looks like on the homepage. So we've got five posts, which isn't overwhelming, but um, what pagination is for is if you have a lot of posts and you want to limit it to a certain number per page, you paginate it. So let's do that and we'll see a quick demo of how this is going to work. So if I jump back over to the will paginate, it tells us how to do this and it's really, really easy. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to basically copy this stuff. Um, so I'm going to just copy at posts equals post paginate and we're going to modify it a little bit to match our setup. Um, but we need to go to the post controller and we'll make sure you go to the uh, blog post, post controller, not the author's post, con post controller. That's hard to say. Um, at any rate, so we obviously have um, a little more that we've done on ours. So we've got most recent published and I'm just going to copy this uh, paginate off the end or cut it and paste it there. And let's see what this looks like now if you refresh. 
so it doesn't do anything. If I go back and I check out in the browser, this you can give it this per page option. And let's play with that just a bit. So if I come in here and I say per page two, and jump back to here. So now you just get the first two. And if I were to say page equals two, question mark page equals two in the URL, uh, it's gonna jump to the next page. Three goes to the last page because we only have five. So the last remaining bit to this is to uh, put something in the front end that will let us click between pages because we don't want people to have to type in the URL page equals whatever. And by the way, just in case you didn't catch it, I got that uh, params page or the, the page number by seeing this params page. I could say um, something in there and that has a direct correlation to what is in the URL. So if I said something equals three, it's gonna go to the third page. Now if I say page, it's just gonna go to the first page because it doesn't know what the page is. Uh, something that when I was getting started was confusing. Anytime you see question mark, something equals something, that's in the params. So let's put this back. And then let's look at post index, right? So at the end, probably, let's just paste this in here and just see what happens. So it just sticks it in there. It's kind of ugly, but it works at the moment. We want to put it at the bottom. So let's do like that. Um, and we can do, let's just see what that looks like. It's just gonna stick it on the bottom now. Okay. And just for symmetry, let's make this three for the moment. In real life, you'd probably make it like nine at least. Okay, so it works. Let's make it look better. So let's start by putting this in a div and we'll just call it pagination. And then we will open up our post SCSS file. Um, inside this index, we'll say dot pagination. And we will uh, just do text align center and see what this looks like. Hmm, I might need to make this width 100%. Let's see what this does. There we go. So now we have a centered previous and next button. So, will paginate has. Um, some examples of free styling stuff you can use and you can download and customize. Um, if you go to mislav, which I'm probably mispronouncing horribly, .github.io will paginate. Um, you can find some styling examples. Um, so what you can do is click on the CSS. I'm going to copy this Apple Store one. Um, so if you click the CSS, it'll give you a uh, file like this. And I'm going to just copy this right here, just the Apple section because I don't want all of it. And I'm going to put it somewhere. So do we have utilities? Okay, so that might not be the best place for it, but that should work just fine and then it's apple underscore pagination so if I go to let's see I think I might need it here it might be let's see let's just see what this does
Interesting. I'm just curious if that was exactly where that was supposed to go or not. Let's see. If I... Inspect this, what do they have? Seems like that's the right thing. Let's check out mine and see what it looks like. Aha, uh -huh. so I need to take out my pagination class because it's doing a, I think it's adding its own so they have some styles that correspond to that already. So let's let's take that out and see what that does. Because I think this is a little too fat is the point. So if I take out my pagination, and then I'm going to go ahead and just delete this because I don't think I need it since I'm using theirs. See what this looks like. Nope, still looks exactly the same. Okay, so I had to do a tiny bit of research, but I figured it out. You need to add this container false save it refresh and now it looks normal so I did not spot this but they have this down here in one of their lower examples I presume that having a container around it makes it a little bigger or something anyway that is it for this episode I will talk to you next time